You mentioned the Aztec. What was the origin of the Aztec? Where did these, where did these people come from? At what time, and how? You know, almost every one of the cultures we're talking about now, we have two different versions of the answer to that question. We have the archaeology version, and we have the Aztecs themselves. The Aztecs have this wonderful migration story where they say that they came from a place well to the north called Aslan, mm -hmm. and that they had this migration that went through kind of a hero's journey where they go to this snake mountain place and they encounter uh, the birth of the war god that they'll worship after this and how they stepped into the Valley of Mexico as the last, the lost brothers of everyone in the Valley of Mexico. They said that they all came from the north near Aslan as a place, a cave with seven different passages called uh, Chiquimostoc, and that all the people who spoke the language Nahuatl came from the cave and most of them went early to the Valley of Mexico. And in the Aztecs uh, story, they were just the lost tribe. They were the last brothers to come in. And But then they show up late game, and they become mercenaries. They just start working for communities in the Valley of Mexico. And this takes place in the 1300s. So about 200 years before Cortez shows up, the Aztecs show up to the Valley of Mexico and they make themselves this uh, indispensable group of mercenaries. They do the dirty work. The, all, the, all the civilized uh, communities around Lake Texcoco, which is in the middle of the, which is now Mexico City, it's all dried up. But uh, those guys were too civilized to fight with each other. But they could hire the Aztecs to do their dirty stuff. So the Aztecs did that and really changed the politics in the game of the Valley of Mexico. The dirty stuff, those so are the muscle. Yeah. They'd go in and, and they'd, they'd kill whoever you wanted killed. And uh, you, now you're the king of this area. So one of these kings that they were working for really liked them and decided, I'm going to make the Aztecs part of our ancestry. I'm going to give them my daughter <laughs> to marry the head of the Aztecs. And the Aztecs sacrificed her. <laughs> and that really pissed that guy off. So he took like his whole army and ran the Aztecs out for a while. They say they live in this horrible desert section eating lizards. But then one of their priests say, we're going to walk around the lake. And my visions say that where we see an eagle sitting on a cactus with a snake in its mouth is where we will build our capital. And they see that, but it's out on an island in the lake. And they, he said, well, I don't know. That's, that's the place. So they build up an island. They go to that island, and then they just start piling up lake mug until they make a whole city there in the middle of the island. They make or the lake, they make an island city. Mm -hmm. And all of this occurs in about 100 years. So they show up about 1300. The capital of Tenochtitlan, as they called it, uh, is really established. And from there, they quickly take over the entire valley. They make uh, what they call the Triple Alliance, which is the two other big communities of the lake are now their allies, but they're not really allies. The, the Aztecs were brutal. They were just, those guys agreed to shut up and let the Aztecs run the show. <laughs> and then the Aztecs spread like a wildfire all the way down into the Maya area. Everywhere they go, they rename everybody's towns and make them pay tribute. Pretty short lasting civilization. Uh, spread extremely quickly. Uh, famous. What? 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 What are some defining qualities that explain that? I think they were very much like they. They had an attitude like Attila the Hun. They just had no problem ripping your skin off. Everybody else had become too comfortable and too civilized, and the Aztecs were just mercenary. They told everybody, you know, we can either rip your heart out, or you can work for us. And if you work for us, you'll be just fine. They'd go to every town they'd go to. The first thing they do is they'd show up with a bunch of uh, 
merchants. There was a merchant class who were also military. They were really the 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 people who assessed where they were going to attack next. They'd go in with a bunch of Aztec products and say, we'd like to trade with you. But all the time they were assessing their military prowess, what uh, what products they had that they could take. And then soon after the Pochteca were there would come the military with the reconnaissance. So the the Aztec had a huge warrior class, as you're saying. So what, what was there just, can you uh, linger on their whole relationship with war and violence? They they worshipped a war deity. Their main temple was uh, the Templo Mayor. It had two temples up on top. One was to Tlaloc, the rain god, who liked a lot of sacrifice himself. But then the other one was Huisilapochli. He was, uh, that translates the hummingbird on the left. But he's the war god. I love that he's a hummingbird. Maybe, you know, he's fast and he comes from the magical side or something. But uh, then then right next to the temple on either side were the two temples of the warriors. One was the eagle warrior clan. The other one was the jaguar warrior clan. And they they were symbolically in competition with each other, though a unified force. I guess, you know, probably an analogy between like the Navy and the Air Force. You know, they had a good natured competition of who was better, mm -hmm. but they were the same force. So those were their symbolic warriors dressed up in all of their finery. And they would, they, they would come at people uh, with these two forces. And it was very unlike anything that had happened before in Mesoamerica. Again, I think I could draw a parallel to what happened in Europe. You know, the famous uh, Henry V moment in Agincourt, where, you know, his kind of uh, ragtag army wipes out half of France's aristocracy with the longbow. Like, up until that moment, Europe had a very... Uh, wars for the elite classes kind of attitude. And then after France lost half their aristocracy, then it was like, maybe we should be hiring from the villages. Mm -hmm. The same sort of thing happened with the Aztec that there was a... Mesoamerica really didn't have huge standing armies, but the Aztec put this army together and they intimidated people. They didn't actually have to use it a lot. It was very it was used to great effect in the in the Valley of Mexico. And for the rest of Mesoamerica, it was mostly the fear factor. But there also seemed to be um, you know, a celebration of uh, of violence. I think you said uh, that beauty and blood went hand in hand for the Aztec. Maybe like the Roman Empire was it? They just had a, maybe a different relationship with what violence, where that stood in uh, the purpose of life, purpose of existence. Is that fair to say? I would hypothesize so. I mean that you know I think it's one of the wonderful things about studying these ancient cultures. You know, knowing what our human capacity is, and the Aztecs. Uh, when I when I said that statement, I what I what I meant by that is. They were absolutely comfortable with human sacrifice and you know ripping people's hearts out. Yeah. This they had this this just you know grotesque violent bent, but in the same way they also absolutely loved flower gardens and poetry and music and dance. The same Aztec king who would order the hearts of a thousand people extracted also would stand up at dinner parties to recite his own poetry or the poetry of famous statesmen that had come before him. And they spent money on things like flower gardens. Mm -hmm. They're, all of the causeways leading to the Aztec capital had beautiful flower gardens, and they had a museum, and they had an aquarium and a zoo, and they had an opera, and they had a ballet. Yeah. And and these things existed together. There was not in the Aztec mind any conflict between witnessing someone's heart getting ripped out one moment in the evening we'd go to the ballet. Um how does that contrast the relationship with war and violence with the uh, with the other civilizations of Mesoamerica and and South America, maybe the Maya? What was their relationship like with war? 
the Maya were certainly influenced by the Aztec at the end. So we get a we get a skewed perspective from the contact period accounts because the Maya were much more violent and sacrifice oriented in their post classic rendition. But in the classic period, it was mostly the priests and the king who were doing the sacrificing of themselves. That we know that the Maya kings would cut their penises and then bleed that blood onto paper. And uh, the paper would burn and become the smoke through which they'd they'd, uh, commune with their ancestors. But they'd actually tie this paper onto their penis, cut it, and then dance so the blood splattered. Uh, But it was them cutting themselves. It Mm -hmm. was different than killing a bunch of other people for it. It was an auto-sacrifice, we call it. Still very macabre, but very different than deciding a whole bunch of other people should die. It was a self-sacrifice thing. Can you speak to sacrifice a bit more? Animal sacrifice, human sacrifice. What what role did that play in, in um, for the Maya, for the Aztec, for the d- different cultures here? Was that religious in nature? It was absolutely religious in nature. And the Aztecs were of the opinion that uh, that the war god demanded people were captured and sacrificed. And it had to be valuable people. There was a lot of, uh, before they made that big standing army, they had just ritual battles that they would have and they'd take captives. Uh, In fact, all around Mesoamerica, they wanted captives so that they could bring them back and sacrifice them for the gods. And the Aztecs deciding to specifically follow the war god did this more than anybody. They did it so much and so successfully that they didn't have any enemies nearby. So they decided this one poor sucker group uh, not that far away called the Tlaxcalans, that they were never going to uh, make peace with them so that they could go close by every year and just have a little symbolic war with the Tlaxcalans and haul them back for a sacrifice. Cortez met those guys and he was like, here are people who hate their guts. <laughs> I'll just use these guys. So, you know, we say, oh, Cortez took over the Aztec world. It was it was Cortez and 20,000 super pissed off Tlesh Collins. And the actual sacrifice, what, so there would be kind of these ritual battles or is it chopping off people's heads? And like, is there is there some interesting rituals around the sacrifice? It's mostly heart extraction, sometimes heads, but they bring them up on top of the temple so everybody can see it. And they had a, a specific stone where they would bend them over so their rib cage would come out. And they, they'd use uh, like a thick obsidian knife. And they had a really just uh, like tried and true way to do it. They'd stab it in in a certain place close. And then they'd push down on the sternum as they ripped up on the rib cage. And they just, so they just make a place where they could just rip it right out. With their hand. They, yeah, with their hand. But okay. they were really just surgical about it. They'd use a thick obsidian knife where they could just break the ribs right along the sternum and then push the sternum down, pull up, and just... While the person was alive? Yep, while the person was alive. And the Aztecs had this idea, like, there was a, there was a horrible drought that went on that almost ruined the entire valley. And they came to this conclusion that... It's because we haven't been killing enough people. Right. We've got to bump this up. And then when they did, and they decided uh, they they really took it out on the Tlash Collins, it rained again. So it was proof positive that they should just keep doing that. (laughs) And they ate people as well. They really did. As part of the sacrifice or is this? uh... After the sacrifice, then they would eat them. And this was part of the drought and the famine thing that started. But then it was just kind of the thing to do. When when Cortez got there, they were still having certain special feasts that involved humans. And and it really upset the Spanish that they would be like uh, tricked into eating human. Like, hey, you liking dinner? (laughs) That was a human. So the idea, was it actually... uh having having a taste for human flesh or is it just you know these kinds of ideas of like if you eat a person's heart that you can get their spirit and their strength and 
In the case of the Aztecs, it seemed like they just liked it. Uh, this guy, Sahagun, who was a very responsible uh, chronicler that was pretty specific that, like, uh, there was a distribution thing. Yeah. Like, the, uh, the, the elites got butts. The butts were the best part. So, the, the, human, the butt cheeks, really? those are the best parts to eat. And then, like, it went down the chain until some people just got, like, fingers and toes. Literally the, the, bought the, the, taste. The, for the Aztec. Yeah. Boy. All right. They well, really they really did. They really did. In fact, that's what caused the uh have you heard of the Noche Triste, the sad night? Mm. The night that the Aztecs really go nuts on the Spanish and kick them out. It's all triggered by this this one guy, um, Pedro de Alvarado, who's left in charge by Cortez as Cortez goes to the coast and tries to uh talk to the new force talk him into being for him, which he does. But Pedro Alvarado's left back in town in charge. And they're doing another one of these huge Aztec buffets and uh, parties to honor them. And it happens. The guy says, you know, hey, do you like dinner? Like, oh, yeah, it's a nice dinner. Well, it's humans. You're eating humans. See, I told you they were good. And Alvarado just freaks out. And he has the, the guards close the doors and he murders everyone in the in the party women children nobody has weapons he just murders everyone and that's what spazzes the the aztecs out to eventually murder montezuma who was their captive and then try to murder all of them and it was all it was all pedro alvarado's fault for freaking out about eating humans just a little practical joke yeah, it was just, they thought it was funny. He did not. That's fascinating. I didn't realize, so I kind of assumed that some level of cannibalism would have to do with, you know, eating the heart to uh, to gain the spirit of the person or something like this. But In, in certain, like, a, you know, deer hunting rituals, things for sure. But the Aztecs, no, they just liked eating humans. It was part of the fear factor, too. I mean, they could walk into a new town and be like, you guys could either send us, you know, a number of Quetzal feathers every month, or we could eat you. So that psychological warfare and actual warfare, it worked. And that's how they spread. Mm -hmm. And they were just about to take over the Maya when the Spanish came and messed everything up. They, they, were, they had the Maya surrounded, and they were about to take over the whole Yucatan. So you think without the Spanish, there would be this Aztec empire that would last for a very long time? Well, I think there would have been an Aztec empire. I think they would have finished dominating everybody. But they did it through hate. And... Everybody hated the Aztecs. Did. Uh, they so it wouldn't have lasted forever. They did not. They were not ruling justly. They were ruling by force, and that that can only go on so long before revolution happens.